living and dead, who did these things, we dedicate this program... The Dam Busters! Presented by the author himself, Paul Brickhill, dramatized by Morris West, an Australasian radio production. is Paul Brickhill. The air crews were thoroughly disgusted with the result of the Pas de Calais raid. They had carried out the most accurate high-level night bombing of the war, and yet, because the markers had been off the target, so had their bombs. Cheshire and Martin decided that 617 Squadron would have to develop its own method of marking targets, but they were quiet about it and made it a personal affair. Between the two of them, they would find out how it could be done. Mickey, bring those aiming point photos over here. Uh, here you are, Skipper. Uh, spread them out, like a good chap. There you are. Now, look here, Mickey. That small black point there is the actual target. Mm -hmm. All round here are the marker flares which were dropped by the pathfinders. Now, by slide rule, you see? Every one of those markers is about 350 yards off target. I don't get it, Skipper. The marker mosquito was flying on pilot beam. The markers were dropped at the exact spot indicated by the beam intersection. Oh, I know that, Mickey, but let's just go on a bit further, eh? Uh, you see? Here. Mm -hmm. Here uh, and uh, here. Mm. These are our bomb bursts. Dead on the markers. We did our part of the job, but the markers were wrong. Well, that's exactly what I was coming to. These photographs prove two things. First, that our bombing is dead accurate. And secondly, that Pathfinder marking is not accurate. <laughs> well, uh, uh, let's be exact, eh, Mickey? Pathfinder marking is accurate for an area, but not for a pinpoint target. Do you agree? Yes, yes, I do. The question is, how do we solve the problem? Well, we've got to find a method of accurate marking. All these rocket sites are small targets. They must be clearly lit. There's one way of doing it, you know, Skipper. What's that, Mickey? Parachute flares. Scrap the ground marking and use parachute flares. They'll light up the whole target. Then we... Then we make it a low-flying job. That's right. After all, that's the way we were trained. It would mean scrapping the high-level bomb site. Yes, I know that. But it would mean at least that we would be on target. I, I think it's the only way, Skipper. So do I. Well, I uh, think we'd better talk to Cochrane about it. And that's the way we see it, sir. Give up the high-level technique and come back to low-level work. Hmm. You, uh, agree with this, Martin? Completely, sir. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Why not, sir? First of all, low-level bombing can be successful, but our experience has proved that it's horribly expensive in men and machines. It's cost us nearly a whole squadron, remember? You should know what happened on the canal raid, Martin. I know very well, sir. But, but if you're looking for a solution to your problem, I, I think that's the only one. I don't agree. What do you suggest, sir? I suggest that you two go off and give it some more thought. Get your squadron working and, and see if any other technique can be devised. Keep me posted on results. All right, sir, but uh, I'm not very hopeful. Well... Just do the best you can. That's all now. Thank you, sir. Good day. Good day, Cheshire. Martin. Hmm. And that's that. We're back where we started. Yes. Any suggestions, Skipper? I, I think the best suggestion is to try and change Cochrane's mind. Well, do you think you can? Well, I think I could. If we had sound results to show with low-level techniques. Well, let's try them. We'll do that, Mickey. We'll start working the boys as soon as we get back.
One gone. Two gone. Three gone. It's no use, Skipper. It doesn't work. The bomb lands accurately enough, but the tra trajectory is so flat that the bomb tends to bounce and skid. Every one of them this morning ended up 200 yards off target. I've been looking at the night results too, Mickey. The boys are shooting well past the range target before they even see it. I'm afraid we haven't got much to show, Cochrane. I, I think we have to... Cheshire speaking. Yes, sir. Good. When? All right, sir, we'll expect you. Oh, yes, sir, we'll be ready. Goodbye, sir. That was Cochrane. Anything new? Yes, there's a new op coming up. Cochrane's flying down to brief us tomorrow night. As you all know, chaps, we haven't had a great deal of success with pinpoint bombing from high level. That's, that's not your fault. It's largely due to faults in our marking technique. <coughs> Before we make any radical changes, however, we want to give it another try on a, on a larger target. Your target for tonight is here. It's a large armament factory on the outskirts of the Belgian town of Liège. Yes, so at least we'll be able to see it or anything. <laughs> That's why we chose it. Now, uh, would you take over from there, Joshua? Uh, very good, sir. <clears throat> uh, now then, chaps, the mosquitoes will go in first. Uh, they'll be using oboe again. As you all know, that means that two radar beams will be transmitted from England. They will cross right over the target. That means the pathfinders won't make any mistakes. Once the flares are down, it's up to us. It's about time we did something. The records have been so good so far. <laughs> yes, well, uh, let's see what we can do tonight. Uh, what's the flak position like tonight? It's dirty. The coast defences are heavy. And whatever way you approach the target, you'll still strike trouble. You don't see... Uh, you see, here. Here and here. They're all heavy batteries. The target itself is heavily protected. What's the weather like? Not so good. The best we can hope is that it will stay moderately clear. All in all, it will be an uncomfortable trip, but it is a short one. Any more questions? All right, chaps. Take off time, 21.30 hours. Check your watches. Captain to crew. Captain to crew. I can't see a damn thing down there. What about you, bomb aimer? Bomb aimer to captain. Not a thing. I saw the flares go down, but the fog's so thick they don't mean anything. Should a risk a drop, Skipper? No, bomb aimer. It's Belgium. Friendly territory. Too much chance of civilian casualties. No, we give it away and go home. Put me onto our team, to the rest of the squadron. You're on, Skipper. This is Leader, calling all aircraft. The target is obscured by thick fog. We are going home. We are over friendly territory. No bombs are to be dropped. Repeat, no bombs are to be dropped. Over. This is Steve Popsy. Going home, leader. Captain to crew. We're heading home now. Watch out for fighters. Rear gunner, can you see any of the others? Jim Wather is stern in the port. Q Queen is starboard. Hello, she's got a fighter on the tail. 
The gun is blazing away. Is it done, I mean? The fight is sticking close. God, he's in, Skipper. In the fuel tanks. He's on fire, Skipper. He's blown up. He's blown up. Captain to crew. Q, Queenie, gone. Watch out for fighters. I am going down to 400. Skipper? Hello, Mickey. A drink? No, have a beer. All the reports in? Yeah. Everybody's home except Jeff Rice. We didn't expect him back. We saw him go. That leaves four of the old 617. We've taken a beating, really. Yes. Uh, by the way, Mickey, I'm going up to London tomorrow. Would you like to come? Sure. What's on? Christmas parcels for Stella Gluft III. Oh. Don't you remember? Oh, I hope you've forgotten. <laughs> sure, sure, I'll come. I, um... I've been taking a look at this proposal of yours, Cheshire. I, um... don't think you realise what you're taking on. Why, uh... Well, there's nothing to it. It's just a chicken run. We paint the aircraft white, put red crosses on the fuselage, come in low over the Baltic at sunrise, drop the Christmas parcels on Sagan and uh, hop out again. Well, it's risky, but we'll have surprise on our side. I, I think we'll get back, all right? Mm -hmm. What do you think, Martin? This is the boss. You'd better talk to him. What's your real objection? I could think of 20 objections to your end of it, but I won't even bother to mention them. My principal objection is the prisoners themselves. Oh, don't tell me they wouldn't welcome Christmas parcels. Oh, no, they'd welcome them all right. But can't you see what would happen? As soon as you start dropping parcels, the prisoners would rush into the compounds and pick them up. Oh, fair enough, wouldn't you? Yes. But look at it from the Germans' point of view. They won't think about Christmas parcels, they'll think you're dropping weapons. As soon as the rush starts, the boys will be mowed down. It'll be sheer slaughter. What have you got to say to that, Skipper? Well, nothing. I just didn't think of it. I uh, just didn't think of it. As a special duty squadron on new and rather hush-hush projects, 617 Squadron was badly located at Coningsby, so they were moved to Woodhall Spa, a one-squadron station where they could carry out their work in exclusive isolation. Of course, Cheshire and Martin were itching to try out their new marking technique, but the military situation in, in Italy caused a different type of job to be found for them one which was considered ideally suited to the squadron's dam-busting abilities. Well, you see, uh, this is our problem, Cochrane. Uh, as you know, uh, our forces have been pinned down for months now on the Anzio beachhead. Uh, uh, you see, we've, we've been building up our forces slowly and with a lot of casualties. And, uh, well, we believe we're just about strong enough for a breakout now. Well, none before time. It's been a messy business. Mm, Calcone, our real problem is that the Germans are pouring reinforcements in through the north of Italy. We've been, well, we've been trying to smash their communications by bombing raids from North Africa, but it still isn't enough. Well, what do you want us to do? Well, um, we've been looking into the results of your dam-busting raid in Germany. Uh, now, if uh, we could do something similar in Italy... It could be an extraordinary help to us. Uh, now, uh, if you just uh, look here at this, uh, this map, uh, this is Rome, and now uh, just here is a very large dam. Uh, actually, it's, a, it's not a dam, it's a lake. Uh, 
which supplies water to Rome itself, and to the whole of the Tiber Valley. Well, now, if we could smash that, we could cut the road clean across. That autostrada and the, uh, the railway alongside it are Germany's only communications with Anzio. Hmm. Yes, I see. Uh, huh? Have you got any photographs of this thing? Yeah, yes, over here. A whole batch of them. Uh, hmm. I... I don't like the look of it. How um, high are these hills? And these here, uh, 1,800 to 2,000 feet. Oh, blazes. Oh, well, this is a long way worse than... It's a long way worse than the Myrna Dam. Can you do it? I'll have to practice first. You see, what it means is that the boys have to slide over that hill and come down from 1,800 feet to 60 feet, and they've only got 3,000 yards to do it. That's a steep dive, even for a light aircraft. Mm. Well, with Lancasters, it's, it's almost a suicide job. Uh, however, we'll try it out. Give me 10 days, I'll let you know. Very well, Cochrane, that's excellent. Uh, there's another thing, Cochrane. You, you won't be able to do this from England. It's too far. You'll have to work from North Africa. Uh, that means high-level security. If you transfer a whole squadron to North Africa and the Germans get wind of it, well, they'll put two and two together and the dam will be a death trap. <laughs> it's enough of a death trap already. Oh, all right, gentlemen. Leave it to me. I'll see what I can do. That's the proposition, Cheshire. It means low flying again, and you know I'm not very happy about that. I think the boys will be happier than you are, sir. I, I doubt it. When they see what they've got to do. How are you going to train them for this job? Uh, Martin here's got some ideas. I quite like them. Well, sir, the crux of the whole thing is to slip over the hill at 1,800 feet and get down to 60 by the time we're over target. Mm -hmm, that's right. Well, sir... Instead of trying to find a location for this training, uh, we'll do it on the airfield itself. You see, we'll, um, we'll start at one end and set up a marker, and, and from that marker we measure about 3,000 yards, and then set up another marker. Now, now, when the boys cross the first marker, they'll be at 1,800. By the time they cross the second, they'll have to be down to 60. Uh, well, what do you think of that, sir? Yes, I like it. It'll reduce the risk of casualties while you're training. Yes. So far as I'm concerned, you can start it right away. Very good, sir. Um, anything else? Hmm? Uh, no. Uh, no, thanks, Martin. Uh, Cheshire and I have some other things to discuss. You can leave us for a while. Very good, sir. He's a good man. One of the best. I uh, wonder you didn't give him the squadron instead of me. Well, um, uh, one of these days I'll tell you about that. Uh, now then, Treasure, we come to our next problem, security. You'll be working from North Africa. The point is to prevent the Germans from hearing about it. That's been worrying me too, sir. No matter what precautions you take, some fool is sure to talk. Yes. Then... Why not give them something to talk about? What do you mean, sir? I've been able to get my hands on a lot of Arctic equipment and de-icers, special heating gear, and a whole lot of Arctic clothing. Suppose we ship it down to Woodall, make a big song and dance about security, put a guard on the hangar, and try to make it look like a hush-hush operation. Then the boys will think they're going to Russia. More than that. When we tell them, as we will, that they're going to North Africa, they won't believe a word of it. <laughs> What's more important, 
They won't even bother to talk about it. <laughs> That's Bomber Command all over. North Africa, they say. They ram it down our necks, North Africa, and the very next day there's a hangar full of snow suits. What do they think? We are nuts. <laughs> uh, who knows? I might even marry a commissar. Female, of course. Nothing all about Pompson, B. <laughs> uh, they'll send you to the salt mines if you do. What do you think this is? A rest cure? <laughs> Mm. It's, uh, it's working, Mickey. Yes, yes, as you say, Skipper, it's, it's working. <coughs> How's the uh, training going? Oh, fair enough. It's damn dangerous, though. It's a hard dive even for a mosquito. Yeah, I see. <laughs> anyway, if they're ready for it, I'd like to give them a run over the wash. Hmm? They'll uh, have to get used to leveling out over water. Okay, Skipper, I'll stack it up. Oh, oh, you better come out and see how they go. All right. I'll be there, Mickey. I must say, I'm quite pleased with them. Um, what do you think, Skipper? Mm hmm? Oh, good show, Mickey. Uh, how many more to come? Uh, Shaughnessy's the last. Let's see. Yes, I got him in the glasses now. There he is, way up. Captain to crew. I'm going down now, boys. Watch me when I level out, my mima. Okay, Skipper, I'll watch. Stand by, fellas. Going down. Here we go. Operator's all right. He's thrown clear. Broken arm, bruises. <clears throat> it's a ruddy miracle, you know. What about the others? Well, you saw it. Not a hope. It just burned out. There's nothing more we can do here, Mickey. Let's go home. Come in. Oh, oh uh, hello, Mickey. Skipper. Uh, sit down. I'll uh, just finish this letter. It's to O'Shaughnessy's next of kin. Yeah, I know how it's like. But don't take it too hard, Skipper. I mean, these things happen. It's not that, Mickey. It's just the raving insanity of the whole setup. Well... What do you mean by that? We've been training for days on this thing. Yesterday we lost one of our best men. This very morning I've got a signal on my desk from Cochrane. Huh? What's he saying? The operation on the dam is off. Uh, oh. oh, no, I... I can't believe it. Well, you'd better. It's true, all right. And tomorrow night they're sending us back to France. To the Pas de Calais. You know something, Skipper? When we go in tomorrow night, no matter what Cochrane says, no matter what anybody says, I'm going in low. And if I don't blast hell out of that target, my name is not Mickey Martin.
Welcome here. Uh, it's the ops room here, sir. Uh, first news from 617. Hmm? What does it say? It says, operation successful, casualties nil, coming home. Nice work. Thank you. Operation successful. I wonder how they did it. I wonder how they did it. <laughs>